So, um, like most couple of people, I get very few phone calls. And when I do get phone calls, three out of four times, it's a recruiter. This is a champagne problem to have. We developers are in a really good position. However, I am not what most recruiters are thinking of when they're thinking of like-minded people to join their team. My name is Estelle Weil, and I am a developer. They say there is a dearth of developers, so why is it so hard to find a good job? I believe there are enough people who can fill the, the developer ranks. I just don't think that recruiters are looking for, the, for everyone. While job descriptions only appeal to white and Asian men who are in the millennial ages, they are targeting less than 39% of the population. They're limiting themselves, and they're failing to, to fill the requisitions. If recruiters targeted 100% of the population, if they reached out to women, Gen Xers, baby boomers, Latinos, African Americans, there would likely be an abundance of qualified candidates. Recruiters are often doing it wrong. They match on keywords. This is kind of a funny example. Um, and that's it. They usually don't understand what they are looking for. Their job descriptions don't describe me or people like me. Their jobs can be irrational. This one's $12 an hour, and you need to know six programming languages and answer the phone. <laughs> Their job descriptions can be off-putting, ageist, homophobic, and sexist. And apologies for the next slide. It's not safe for work, but it shouldn't be out there. This job posting, this job posting didn't leave me speechless. It made me angry. I'm here today to speak about making the web a welcoming place. I'm, not, I'm here speaking about sexism, ageism, and racism in our industry, not because that's what interests me. It's not what I want to be working on. I actually don't want to be working on this. The isms interfere with my being able to do my best work. Studies show women need to perform at higher levels to appear as competent as their male counterparts. I know many amazing developers who are Latino, black, and female. Actually, almost every black, Latino, and or female developer I know is amazing. We will have succeeded in diversifying the workforce when I meet a lot of ordinary, une unexceptional developers who are women, Latino, and or African American. Today, I want to talk about bringing ordinary developers into the workforce. Let's resolve these issues, these isms, so it can be a non-issue, and I can go back to focusing on code, which is the passion that brought all of us here today. Many recruiters are looking for ninjas, rock stars, and cowboys. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear the word ninja, I think of someone that's never going to be at the desk because they're invisible and I can't find them. When I think about rock star, I think about really demanding and trash hotel rooms. And when I think about cowboys, I think about horse manure. I don't know about you, but these are not things I want to be working with. Developers who identify as rock stars and those that seek to hire them have the perception that most developers suck, except for a select few. If you are only recruiting from the two, top 2.5% of this 38% of the population that meets your demographic, then sure, there is a dearth of developers out there. What they don't realize when they're recruiting from this tiny little subgroup is that it's an imaginary subgroup. They're actually unicorns. All the while, the rest of us feel inadequate. Many of us, if not most of us, have imposter syndrome. Unfortunately, many of us believe this rock star fallacy. We feel isolated because we think that everyone is actually in this amazing subgroup and we're alone in this you know, not so good. Um, we don't fit into that awesome developer category. In reality, we're all average. Just like every skill, there is a normal distribution. If you think about restaurant chefs, 95% of them are average, 2.5% of them are amazing, and the other 2.5% work at Applebee's. Did I just say that? I did. So, like all of you, I'm average. I'm normal. And no matter what your imposter syndrome is telling you, you are as amazing or as average as me and everyone else here. 
So now that we know that we are all average or normal, we know that there can be this huge pipeline for our candidate pool. Job descriptions and recruiters need to stop seeking those stars. And the rest of us need to stop feeling less than. We need to stop using words like rock star, ninja, and cowboy. It's just hurting us. Stop recruiting based on your favorite beer, whiteboarding, or a cultural fit. Yes, you do want your team to get along, and you want people to have the same core values. But creating a homogeneous team will actually cripple you in the long run. You already have the job you want. So instead of seeking your little clone, find someone completely different who complements your skills, not replicates your demographic. So here's some potential candidates. Interview them based on the candidate's skills, not yours. Find out what the candidate knows. Don't try to prove what you know. Don't test them to see if they can decipher that obscure, likely irrelevant trick you found online. When you expand your views, there really is a huge pipeline coming in. And when you normalize your workforce and make it reflective of the larger population, you'll have a much bigger pool from which to draw candidates. And your team will be reflective of society, so your product will better, be better, and your product will reach a bigger demographic. Right now, we have developers teaching themselves, graduating from schools, colleges, and universities, participating in programs like Telegraph Academy, Hackbright Academy. They're following MOOCs um, and participating in groups like Girl Develop It and Black Girls Code. There's a large supply of potential candidates if we don't limit ourselves to that fallacy. So when you do post your job description, make sure you have a welcoming message. Don't use those messages I showed you earlier. And post them in places that reach a larger demographic. Post on company websites, post on LinkedIn, Glassdoor, White Truffle, The Muse, and through mailing lists, networks, and Twitter, rather than just on Reddit, Hacker News, and Dice, because those only reach a very limited demographic. And unfortunately, while we've been growing this pipeline, this pipeline has a lot of leaks. 35% of web developers are women, but only 19.6% of software, software engineers, a profession that makes 50% more money, are women. Women are 48% of the workforce, but we make 42% uh, of the income. Women, on average, earn 78 cents on the dollar. Black women earn less than white women. And if you're Latina, well, you might as well work a 22-hour work week, because that's actually all you're getting paid for. And while there is this huge income disparity between the genders and the races, and I assume age groups and other uh, categories as well, but didn't get all the stats for those, that's not the main reason that women um, and others are leaving tech. Women and others are leaving tech because of the hostile work environment. So we can continue feeding this pipeline, and we definitely should. But we need to close, we need to seal those cracks through which 50% of women in STEM fall. And you have the power to fill those cracks. Someone helped you to get to where you are today, whether it was a teacher, a mentor, or even if you learned by doing a view source. Someone wrote that code. Someone helped you get to where you are today. So give back. It's up to all of us to help fill those cracks. Creating pipelines is currently the rage, and that's good. That's what a lot of companies are focusing on, and we need to continue doing that. But it's not going to resolve the gender disparity in our profession if it's full of leaks. So that's where you can come in. I want you to be the super plumber and help fix those leaks. Everyone in this room has the power to fix the cracks um, in their own work environment. That's draining out 50% of women. You can choose to be part of the solution. You can choose to use your powers for good. There are great programs filling the pipelines by reaching previously untapped populations. And they're doing it in accessible ways in the neighborhoods where people live with different learning styles. I want to give a shout out, and I know there's some here, and I know a few of them are back there and going to be coming out later. I want to give a shout out to the, all those heroes who are using their powers to help with the pipeline. For those of you involved in Hackbright, 
Telegraph Academy, Girl Develop It, Black Girls Code, Khan Academy, and other programs, I want to thank you. I think we all want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts because you guys have awesome powers and you're using them for good. For those of you who aren't involved, I don't think you need to feel guilty. You might not have the time or the resources to get involved. However, you do have the power and you have mostly the responsibility of making sure your work environment is inviting, supportive, and non-toxic for everyone. It really takes little effort once you realize what is going on. While you know, fish don't realize that they're in water, and we don't really think about the air we breathe, you might not be noticing the microaggressions leveled all day, every day, at those who are other, be that older, trans, black, female, over eight, whatever. To use your powers, you need to notice. Not caring about a, a, your toxic environment of your development area or your workplace is a privilege that not all of us are privy to. While you can't choose whether what, someone, what you or someone else in your work environment says is offensive, you can choose whether or not you care. So here's a riddle. It's up there. A father and a son are in a car that stalls on the railroad tracks. An oncoming train smashes in the car, into the car, killing the father instantly. The gravely injured son is rushed to the hospital. The doctor enters the room, sees the child on the table, and says, I cannot operate on the child. This child is my son. How can this be? I immediately came up with two dads. It took me two extra seconds to come up with the doctor's a woman, the, the son's mom. Apparently, I'm not homophobic, but I still have a lot of work to do on my internalized sexism. So how long did it take you to come up with that solution? Did you come up with the answer before I said it? As long as you are working on improving, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We, are born, we aren't born with isms. It's something that is taught to us. And it does take a while and a lot of effort to unlearn. So, how do you make a work environment where everyone can thrive? First, be nice and treat everyone equally. There's a lot of rules up there, but those are, that's the main one. Here, and when you get back to work, make sure you don't talk over people. Even if you disagree with someone's code, assume that it's as good as yours, just different, and work together to come up with co coding guidelines and practices if necessary. Use the same language for everyone in your workplace and in your life. If you call women bossy or aggressive, use those same words for men. Or better yet, don't use either of those words. Use positive words like confident and assertive. And when you meet someone here today, whether they are lighter than you or darker than you, older than you or younger than you, more masculine than you or more feminine than you, smaller than you or larger than you, Assume that they are a developer. Assume that they are as skilled as you. And assume that while they might want to talk to you, that they're not actually interested in you. And at work, tell people what you want them to do, instead of telling them what they are doing wrong. So be positive, point out the positive instead of, you know. And have an improv mentality. Start your sentences with yes and instead of no. And start, like if you disagree with someone, start off with, with, you, with the, what you agree on before indicating how you might want them to change. And bounce ideas off of people instead of just dismissing ideas outright. Have actual systems for onboarding everyone. If new employees start on the same, with the same training, then there's, better, there's a more level playing field. And when you have social events, Invite everyone, invite your entire team to lunch, not just your clique, because you'll meet new people. Make after-work events also inclusive, and make sure that they don't always revolve around drinking, because you don't want people to feel excluded. And formalize processes. We all have biases. Women, if they get promoted at all, get promoted based on experience. Men tend to get promoted based on what their potential is. The more processes are implemented, the more we can prevent the effects of conscious and even unconscious biases. You'll see, once you've made conscious efforts to improve the environment for everyone, it will become natural and will no longer require effort. 
For example, use git blame when you find a particularly excellent line of code, not just when you find an error. And when you do find an error, teach, don't blame. Most of all, just be nice. Be nice at work, be nice in the comments, be nice online and in real life. And teach others. You'll find that teaching benefits you just as much as the person you're teaching. And hire juniors. Hire unexceptional programmers that have great potential. Hire people that know their average and realize that some people oversell themselves, but a lot of people undersell themselves. So be aware of that during the interview process. And acknowledge the little successes instead of only discussing the features or code snippets that fail to meet expectations. Recognize, um, praise all your developers, especially the women, for their efforts, not just their accomplishments. So we all have powers. We just have to decide how we use them. So please, use your powers to make your work environment an awesome one. Use your powers to, to cultivate awesome engineers and be conscientious by hiring, training, and retaining a diverse kick-ass team. Treat other developers and everyone at work the way you would want others to treat your family members. They will likely emulate you by being kind to others. So let's use those powers to hire, train, and retain a great workforce. By being effective super plumbers, we can create a whole slew of new superheroes um, who in turn can help improve the status quo. So please join me as I try to be my best I try to do my best to be a super plumber um, and use my developer powers for good. Thank you very much.